हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरीवन टू आवर नेक्स्ट प्लेलिस्ट सीरीज दैट इज़ फार्माकोकाइनेटिक्स सो नाउ वी आर हेडिंग फ्रॉम रूट्स ऑफ ड्रग एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इन टू द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर दैट इज फार्माकोकाइनेटिक्स नाउ द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन राइज इज व्हाट इज फार्माकोकाइनेटिक्स इट इज बेसिकली अ स्टडी स्टडी ऑफ वॉट स्टडी ऑफ ड्रग्स बट इट्स अ क्वान्टिटेटिव स्टडी सो बेसिकली इट्स अ क्वान्टिटेटिव study of drugs how drugs moves in how drugs moves through out of the body okay so when you take any kind of medicine in your body how drug goes in the body how it gets absorbed how it's distributed how it's metabolized how it gets excreted so all of these things in detail will be covered under the topic head that is known as pharmacokinetics so as this figure suggesting when you uh, take any kind of dosage form through drug the drugs releases it goes into the blood in blood through blood that drug remains in a free form or drug remains in a protein bound form it goes at the particular site of actions sometimes the extra drug goes into the storage into the tissues eventually drug gets metabolized and gets excreted by different routes so absorption distribution excretion all these things are been covered and sorry metabolism so all these four things are covered under pharmacokinetics so it is also known as absorption distribution metabolism and excretion so ADME study it is also known as ADME study of a drug that is pharmacokinetics clear now we need to understand how drugs goes or moves inside a body through the cells now we know the structure of cell membrane uh, what it's made up of like for an example this is outside of a cell and this inside of a cell this is a structure of a cell wall and cell wall is been made of lipid bilayers it's also known as phospholipids okay so the proteins are also there phospholipids are also there uh, lip so everything's been covered under these cell layers and mostly because they are lipid made lipid soluble agents lipid soluble agents or lipid soluble drugs easily can pass is through that membrane right for that we'll see in next slide so it's a bilayer of lipid where hydrophilic heads oriented outwards and hydrophobic hydrocarbon chains oriented inwards so it's a, a cell wall where hydrophilic is outside and hydrophobic is inside now what is hydrophilic and hydrophobic you should be no weak philic means loving okay so hydrophilic means loving h2o water so these are more of a water soluble compounds that are also known as ionic compounds or the polar compounds like salts ions these are hydrophilic like what is hydrophobic means which fears of water so these are non polar compounds these are also known as lipophilic okay so these are lipo philic so hydrophobic or lipophilic more of the same these are mainly oil and fat based so these are the two uh, terminologies you should be knowing what is hydrophilic and what is hydro phobic this transfer of drug across the membrane occurs mainly under three headings first so that is filtration second that is passive diffusion and third a specialized transport system we we'll look all of this in detail first let let's talk about what is filtrations we know what filtration is it's simple there are some pores or channels through which any molecule or substance gets filtered out so smaller molecules passes through and larger molecules gets filtered out so that is simple as that for an example in this picture the 
blue molecules are there these blue molecules are mainly non lipid soluble and the red molecules are lipid soluble so these lipid soluble agents can pass through membranes okay so this lipid soluble red color can pass through membranes why because their membranes are made more of a lipid so it becomes easier for them to diffuse through the membrane what about blue molecules this most blue molecules it's very difficult for them to pass the membranes so they cannot pass through the membrane how they passes through the membrane they passes through some pores or channels so these are also known as aqua pores or paracellular spaces through which they passes and in all in that also the larger molecules of of, of that uh, basically uh, area won't get passed only the smaller molecules will be passed so that is known as filtration so lipid insoluble drugs crosses the membrane by filtrations if their size is smaller than the diameters of the pores it's a most important mechanisms of excretion through glomerular filtrations we know in kidney it's a basic part that is glomerulus so glomerulus filtration occurs through there's the name suggest filtration process what is the clinical relevance of these filtrations majority of the cells like for an example intestinal mucosa rpcs which are having very small pores so drugs with molecular weight more than 100 or 200 are not able to penetrate while capillary cells having a large paracellular spaces and because of that albumin some proteins can filter out through them so we mostly see edema in uh, a case of congestive heart failure you know what this edema is sometimes um, fluid comes out of these capillaries some molecules come out those out of those capillaries so capillary is having a large paracellular spaces so that finishes with filtration let's talk about second thing that is known as passive diffusion and it's also very simple let's go to the same figure where we'll concentrate on lipid soluble drugs which are red dots so this lipid soluble agents can passes through the membrane and it goes from higher concentration to the lower concentrations so majority of drugs follows this passive diffusion higher concentration to lower concentration is the movement so it is also called as downhill movement equalizes the drug concentration of both the side of the membrane so eventually this red dots will go in this blue area and it will equalize the concentrations so this is the basic thing now rate of diffusion now this rate from higher concentration to the lower concentration the movement of the molecule it depends on basically three things the concentration gradient across the membrane first how much higher concentration is here it depends on that second physiochemical properties of drugs okay so drugs chemical and physical physical properties and the permeability of that membrane how big or large the surface area is and how rich blood supply is so all these thing matters in the case of passive diffusion so concentration gradient physiochemical properties of drugs and about the membrane how membrane how much it's permeable how large it is how rich in the blood supply it is so all these things affecting this passive diffusion again we'll talk about its clinical relevance because you know eventually the pharmacology is clinical relevance so movement of drugs should be relevant to clinical uh, system so that we can take advantage of these concepts so passive diffusions clinically depends upon lipid solubility of drugs how lipid soluble or water soluble are they ionization status of a drug and ph of drug as well as medium we'll go through all these three things in details so these are some basic concepts that you need to memorize and these are very very important okay i would say most important in pharmacology theory as well as viva 
Now, remember these things. Higher the lipid solubility, better the diffusion. So, if your drug is more lipid soluble, it can pass through the membrane easily. If your drug is more water soluble, it becomes difficult for that drug to pass through the membrane. Simple. So, higher lipid solubility, better diffusion through membrane. So, first thing is being covered, the lipid solubility. Second, ionization status. If your drug is unionized, so diffusion is better. And if your drug is ionized, it's difficult for drug to pass through the membrane. So, second thing which has been covered, the ionization status. And the third thing is the pH. pH of both pH of drug and pH of medium. So, if the pH of drug and the pH of medium is same, your drug becomes unionized and as we have seen, unionized drug is having better diffusion. So, if you are having a drug and a medium having the same pH, it becomes unionized so the better diffusion contrary if the drug is same but the medium is different the drug becomes ionized and it becomes difficult for diffusion let's take an example acidic drug in acidic medium so here medium and drug both are acidic in nature so same so this applies drug becomes ionized unionized and better diffusion here the drug is basic, medium is basic, both are same, so drug becomes unionized, better diffusion. What if the drug is acidic and medium is basic? So medium gets changed, so drug becomes unionized and it becomes difficult for diffusion. Same way if the drug is basic and medium is acidic, drug becomes ionized and it becomes difficult for diffusion. So see three things being covered, so this is the third thing that pH portion. So, three things are important. First, the lipid solubility of a drug. Second, the ionization status of a drug. And third is the pH. pH of drug and pH of medium. So, all these things mainly uh, uh, directly associated with diffusion or transport of that drug inside the body. Let's take an example, a clinical example, a relevant example of this diffusion and all this solubility and pH concepts, especially the pH concepts. This is a stomach and in stomach there is two parts. One is cell lining and second is lumen, where in lumen mostly there are acid is there. So medium is mostly acidic. So there is a lumen, this is a lumen, if we you know enlarge those things, so this is a lumen part, this is stomach cell part. In lumen, the pH is extremely acidic, so pH is 2 or 3 and in stomach cell pH is basic, around 7. So in acidic pH and here it's a basic pH, now we are introducing a drug that is name is aspirin. We already would be knowing about this aspirin. Aspirin, more importantly, is an acidic drug. So, we are introducing acidic drug into the acidic pH medium. So, what happens? The drug becomes unionized. So, drugs can easily go into the cells. Now, the aspirin, which is an acidic drug, is in the stomach cells. But what happens now? Now, the acidic drug gets exposed to the medium which is basic so according to our principle the drug becomes ionized here and now this ionized drug cannot go outside okay so drug gets trapped that ion gets trapped and that eventually produces damage of the stomach cells so what its clinical relevance aspirin like weak acidic drugs get absorbed better in the stomach. So, absorption of this acidic drug is better in acidic medium. 
but because the stomach cells or the lining cells having basic pH it produces cell damage so it may contribute contribute to gastric mucosal damage and that is why aspirin having adverse drug reactions of gastritis mainly damages the cell okay so let's take some of the examples of acidic drugs aspirin penicillin is an antibiotic thiopental sodium phenytoin these are used in epilepsy this we, this is also used as an anti epileptic as well as in general anesthesia so these acidic drugs eventually uh, main important thing is they get better absorbed from acidic medium that is from stomach what about basic drugs atropine morphine chloroquine ephedrine you know all these drugs you'll go through in different systems but here you can remember few of the examples initially so these are basically a uh, basic drugs and basic environment is there in intestine so they gets better absorbed from intestine important application or another clinical application apart from absorption portion is in case of toxicity so this is again a clinically relevant condition where we use these concepts of ph in treatment of poisoning or in case of toxicity for an example let's let's say a patient with acidic drug poisoning patient has lot of acids in the body you know in kidney in kidney uh, we will see in in later half there is a process called as reabsorption where kidney tries to reabsorb all the important molecules from the urine into the blood so from urine into the blood the important you know molecules gets absorbed and this process is known as reabsorption this process is also dependent on same factor as absorption ph lipid solubility ionization so all these things are applicable here so reabsorption process in the nephron which is a passive diffusion of drugs from urine into the blood so what happens in case of acid poisoning in acid poisoning the you now this acid which is in the body into the blood eventually goes into the urine and now if now if we alkalinize the urine what if we alkalinize the urine so what happens the drug is acidic and the medium is alkaline so drug becomes ionized so these ionized drugs now cannot go back into the blood so there is no passive diffusion so the no reabsorption process and there would be more excretion of this acidic drug into the urine and this would be benefited in the case of acidic poisoning so in acidic poisoning we usually alkalinize the drug and same way in case of basic drug poisoning or the basic drug toxicity the treatment basically is to acidify the urine so clear so it's a case of acidic drug poisoning here the acidic drugs from acidic medium gets absorbed again or reabsorbed into the system again so we basically alkalinize the urine so acidic drug in alkaline medium become ionized and this ionized drug cannot get back diffused or reabsorbed and eventually gets more excreted into the urine and that is why this is the main concept which has been frequently asked in your examinations how this concept of ph solubility lipid solubility helps in clinical side so thank you very much for uh, all your attentions hope you are clear about the concept these are very very important concepts if you are having any doubts you can comment in the comment box and uh, i'll try and help you on that thank you very much